Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for Amdapur Keep. This is a level 50 dungeon that you unlock once you have completed the main story questline. It drops both Alagan Tombs of Philosophy and Mythology and is one of the most common 4-man farm dungeons for players looking to prepare for endgame content. My name is Mistech, and I'll be your dungeon guide. As of the last hotfix, AK speedruns have been nerfed with the addition of extra trash and a few mechanics that don't allow you to easily progress through each section of the dungeon. However, there are certain trash packs that can still be avoided. If you're doing this with a pug, remember to always follow your tank's lead and try not to pull any unnecessary packs. The trash is relatively simple. In this first section, one mob of the group will cast Void Call. If successful, this will spawn an additional mob. It's usually best to focus this one down first. You'll encounter these Dollahands throughout the instance. They have a frontal cone that should be avoided and cast a buff on themselves that can also be interrupted. For anyone looking to acquire the Demon Box minion, note that it is found in a chest outside of the first boss's room by a group of cultists. The minion loot itself is distributed by roll and is not a guaranteed drop for the entire party. The first boss encounter in AK begins with a Lunatic Priest. In the first phase of the encounter, you'll have to deal with him casting Void Fire 2, a mechanic that you've seen before in Hockey Manor. To refresh, this mechanic places an AoE effect on the ground beneath a player. Players should move out of the AoE to avoid the explosion that follows a few seconds after. Near the end of his life, the priest will begin to cast Void Summon. This cast cannot be interrupted and leads into the next phase of the fight, where we face the true first boss. Continue burning down the priest before switching to Psych Flare. Now, the boss casts Void Thunder 2, another ability you may be familiar with. It hits very hard. For any fresh 50 tanks, I would highly recommend interrupting as many of these casts as possible. Once you gear up, you'll be able to survive multiple hits, but until then, try not to give your healer a heart attack and avoid eating these as much as possible. Psych Flayer's main mechanic here is spawning golem adds throughout the fight. If you notice, in each side of the room is a pile of rubble. These adds will spawn from these piles in a timed sequence and can be tanked on the boss or by DPS. They don't put out too much damage, but they do cast AoE column attacks that can get annoying if not dealt with quickly. All of their attacks can also be interrupted. At 50%, Psych Flayer will spawn the massive golem add at the end of the room. This golem cannot be tanked and will walk the length of the room shooting off a massive point blank AoE in different parts of his path. The easiest way to deal with this is to pull the boss all the way against one of the walls, where the group has ample room to avoid the AoE. Continue focusing the small golem adds down until the boss is down. After picking up your fabulous new loot, you continue into the next section of the dungeon via another Aether Flow. In this section, you'll come across statues that will spawn demons once you are within range. A lot of these statues can be found around already existing groups of adds. To avoid getting overwhelmed, tanks can body pull to spawn the demons and pull them backwards away from the other sets. The spawn demons will automatically chase whoever activated them first. The second boss is my favorite in this instance, the Demon Wall. It's important to note the platform that you'll be fighting on. On either side are endless pits. Should you fall into one of these, you will die, so positioning is key on this fight. The boss itself cannot and does not need to be traditionally tanked. It will fire off single target attacks on random party members throughout the fight, but the damage is easy to keep up with. Part of the challenge of this fight comes in dancing around void zones, handling adds, and destroying the wall before you run out of room. Oh yeah, did I mention that the wall moves forward each cycle of mechanics? How awesome is that? So, the first thing to watch out for is the void zone segments of the ground. These always come in the same fixed pattern, so once you learn it, it'll be easy to expect. First, the middle will become a void zone, then the two outsides. Positioning yourself on the outer edge of the middle section will allow for the least necessary movement while dancing between zones. Getting caught in this void zone will do damage and apply a slow debuff on you. While it can be dispelled, it's best not to get hit with it in the first place. Keep in mind that your healer is also dancing around these zones and may not necessarily have the time to stop and cast. After doing this twice, the boss will cast Repel. It is very important to stack up in the middle here and stop moving. Otherwise, you will fly off the edge and you will die. Once the boss finishes his cast, the entire party will be punted back towards the entrance and the wall will begin to move forward. You can think of this as one mechanic cycle. After the second time the group is punted backwards, you'll notice that the ground near the entrance is now a massive void zone. Since the boss will continuously move forward, you will eventually run out of room, so it's imperative to destroy the boss before he reaches that back void zone. After this second cycle, the boss will spawn two bees, one on each side of the platform. 
The tank should pick up one of these bees while the DPS focus on the other one. At lower gear levels, it is very important to completely nuke the DPS bee before it's able to cast Thunderstorm. Use limit breaks and cooldowns here. Once the DPS bee is down, immediately switch to the tank bee. This bee will definitely cast Thunderstorm at least once and it should be interrupted. Ideally, the bee should die before it is necessary to interrupt again, but if not, move out of the AoE zone as fast as possible. If you are hit with Thunderstorm, you'll be affected by Paralysis, which is pretty devastating on this fight. All of this is done while continuing to dance around the Void Zones. Remember to stack in the middle for Repel, even if the bee is still up, and avoid the AoE at all costs. Once those bees are down, the remainder of the fight is just a continuation of the normal mechanics cycle. In this section, the Succubi Trash will throw AoE fireballs at you. Be careful not to stand in these as they do a lot of damage and can one-shot any fresh 50s. The last boss is Anan Taboga. You'll notice four statues centered around the room and these are vital to avoiding one of the mechanics. Before I go into that though, I'd like to talk about the positioning of the boss, which is key to an easy fight. I pull the boss to the side of the room and tank him right next to this statue. With his butt on the wall, his tail swipe will never affect anyone, and staying this close to the statue allows me and the DPS to have to move very little to avoid the AoE. The boss will cast Rotten Breath throughout the fight. This is a cleave-like ability that also places a poison slowing debuff on its victim. Obviously, this should be cleansed by the healer as fast as possible, and the group should avoid standing in front of the boss at all times. The main mechanic here is Imminent Catastrophe, a long cast that causes a room-wide AoE explosion originating from the center of the room. Everyone needs to line of sight the center of the room behind the statues. Pay attention to my movement here. Once the cast is complete, the melee can either choose to stay on this side of the boss or run to the left of the statue through the boss to the other side, while I move to the right of the statue. If done correctly, the boss will never turn and never cast his rotten breath on any member of the group. This also keeps the tail swipe against the wall. Each time the catastrophe hits the room, it will destroy one of the statues and cause an ad to spawn from it. In my groups, I let the DPS tank and burn down the ad while I keep the boss positioned here. The ad will do a ranged AoE ground attack that players will have to move out of. This can target the tank, so be careful if you have to reposition the boss. Since there are only 4 statues in the room, you technically only have 4 cycles of catastrophes that you'll be able to LOS. Consider this the soft and rage timer. Near the end of the fight, players will be affected by a very important mechanic. If you see a very obvious purple line on your tune, it's imperative to run away from the group. After a short time, you will drop a pulsing AoE ball zone thingy. Obviously, you don't want to drop this on the group. Just keep doing this over and over until the boss is dead. There you have it, Amdapur Keep. You'll be seeing a lot of this one trying to cap mythology every week, so have fun with it. Up next, we have Hard Mode Primals. Exciting. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.